don't gun it though. <laughs> First piece goes to Hunter. What can you do if you're a YouTube creator that wants to grow on TikTok? What are some best practices? Give me some awards to give to these guys. So you can have that, it's yours. Welcome back to the What's Inside podcast. I am Dan Markham. I am the host and uh, we have the YouTube channel What's Inside that has over 7 million subscribers. We're also on a lot of the other social media platforms. This is our podcast where we go deeper into the behind the scenes of our YouTube channel of social media. We've been doing this for seven or eight years now on the different platforms. And I feel like there's a lot of insights that we have that will help other people that might want to be part of this. And there's some funny stories of the behind the scenes of just what it takes to work with a big brand, like weird things that have happened. And over the next year or two, as we make this podcast, we're going to be meeting with people that are either one, really, really interesting that have created cool products or businesses and finding out like what's inside their minds or people that are our employees and or family, like my son, Lincoln, my wife, Leslie, and our employees. We've done a few podcasts with them talking about the behind the scenes, the funny things that have happened but then also tips for social media and just um, interesting conversations, whatever we want to talk about. But um, if you're somebody that wants to follow this podcast, go ahead. You can download all of the podcasts that you've missed so far and be notified for the future ones. We also are going to be putting this on YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel that breaks down some of the clips and we'll have the full podcast on there. Today, we, our guest is Hunter DeFries and he has worked with What's Inside for years. I don't even know what his title is because basically I'm like, what do you want your title to be? Okay, great, go for it. I don't know, digital social media manager, digital director, like, I don't know, whatever his title is, I think it's more important what his role is and what he does. So um, Hunter came on originally out of college to be an intern and to work on our Facebook page. I, I could see that Facebook monetization was coming and I, we had a lot going on with YouTube. We had our main channel, we had our family channel. And I knew that I wanted to be one of the first people that's monetized on Facebook and could take advantage of that platform in a way before the masses are there. Hunter had some experience doing some stuff on Facebook and he had a passion for Facebook. So he came on board and really helped so that our page could get some organic views and have some reach. And since then has taken on a lot of different roles. Um, we have a TikTok account and that's fully managed by Hunter. And that was his initiative to say, I want, to, I want what's inside to be on TikTok. So I'm like, great, go for it. We have a Snapchat account where we post things on Snapchat. That's pretty much all managed by Hunter. And then um, some of our brand deals, some of the brand collaborations that we have, a lot of times Hunter is the one that will work on the brand deals. So anyway, did I cover everything? Is that pretty good? I, I think you covered everything. Yeah. Um, and it's been a ride because I think that's the general overview, but then we don't talk about the little things that we do here and there on the back end. And uh, just having fun moments like this, just sitting down, talking, talking strategy and having all that. Yeah, I think a lot of people see a YouTube channel. And OK, to be fair, um, I did a podcast this last week. Not sure which order it's going in, but I did a podcast with a sports card investor with Jeff Wilson. Really cool guy, entrepreneur. His channel, if you look at the numbers, is way smaller than ours. He has like, I don't know, 50,000 subscribers, maybe. Um, his ad revenue is about $3,000 a month, which is like most of the time, a 10th of what ours is. And, but at the same time, we have like three or four employees. Jeff has 20 right now and is bringing on even more with us having 7 million subscribers, one and a half million subscribers on the family channel, 7 million on the main channel, and then all the other platforms with everything we have. It is kind of amazing that we only have like four or five employees. We keep it small or it's like a family business. But it does give us an opportunity for Hunter and I just to hang out like he's here all the time in the office. Most of the time he gets to be part of all of the brand deals, all of the weird experiences. So I think that's kind of fun that like even though in one level we're big, we're actually kind of small. You no, know, it's 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 so much better than having like a big company and kind of losing track of what projects here and there like we communicate so clearly to each other. Like we're pretty much ca caught up all the time besides like when you're traveling. But I catch you up almost when you land like yeah. that's the only time you're not in the know um but it's fun because we're expanding like you said like facebook was what i was originally hired for but now we're like experimenting with so many other platforms we're doing great on tiktok but now we're looking at like platforms like medium and like all like written content uh, converting our videos to written which is really exciting and 
I, I think it's just fun for me because when I got here, I was out of college, had these huge dreams and aspirations. And I'm like, I just want to conquer the internet. I want to see how we can like just expand a good message anywhere we can. And we've been able to do that over the last few years. And especially I would say within the last 18 months, we've been able to diversify quite a bit. When you say you're, when you were out of college, aren't you walking in college like in like two weeks? Yeah, I am. Like, uh, so I graduated from LDS business college, which is now Enzyme college. And then I started working with Dan, but then I started working on my bachelor's degree online while I was working. And, uh, once COVID hit, I had one, I had one test that I had to take, um, a library test and I waited a full year and then I just passed the test like two months ago. And now I get a walk in 28 with days. With your what? With your bachelor's degree? With my bachelor's degree. In? In uh, communications, strategic communications. Okay, cool. All right. So Hunter, we've done podcast with Matt, with Jason, a couple of the other employees, um, the premise of behind that one, if you guys haven't listened to it yet, is there's, if you're watching, there's like a gold play button. I don't even know if you can see it in this shot, but we've got the YouTube gold play button. And I surprised them and gave them their award as like a gift. I really going to go to a million. So that's yours. You can take this home with you. Really? YouTube gold play button. We already gave Hunter his with Steven down in Arizona. So we're not doing a surprise with that in this video. I reached out to the awards people and I'm like, hey, give me some awards to give to these guys. So you can have that. It's yours. I'm shaking. I don't really know what to do here. <laughs> I'm thinking, why don't we go through some of the platforms and let's do some high level best practices and where the current state is for some of these things. Because even though we're a small team, I think people would be impressed with the amount of knowledge that we have and like tips that we have on different social media platforms. Um, a lot of people would go and pay a lot of money for a consultant to be able to learn some of the tips or have like a bunch of employees, but we just kind of learn and we go with what we think is the latest and greatest and it's fun. And we learn from experience, we fail on some platforms and then we, we have success on them as I think that's like one of the best ways to learn. So we're going to do like, I wouldn't call it a rapid fire, but kind of a rapid fire. I'm going to go through, I'm going to say the platform and then we'll have you say a few, like the current state of the platform and, and like tips for somebody that is, that wants to grow on there. Some things that maybe they don't know about. So social media 101, I guess 101 is like the basic level. What's like a higher level? 210, 310 yeah. Well, yeah, in college? Yeah, let, let's do 310. It's been a long time since I've been in college. I forget the numbering system. Okay, so let's get started on TikTok. Tell me about TikTok. What, where, what can you do if you're a YouTube creator that wants to grow on TikTok? What are some best practices? Let, let's, let's start off with just saying that TikTok is a very unique platform in the sense that you have 59 seconds max to capture their attention, but you're capturing their attention within the first three, three seconds. Um, so you need a good hook, but most YouTubers like either they are already spending a lot of time making videos or like making just content from their phone is a little bit, you know, difficult. Like they, they'd rather be spending time making a YouTube video, getting paid because the creator fund isn't where, um, YouTube's at with monetization. And so I think the biggest thing is like trying to condense your best videos down to 59 seconds and just get straight to the good stuff. So like with what's inside, we did what's inside a Tesla tire. And so we actually made a hype clip of, I think it was eight seconds, maybe seven seconds of each video. And we broke it down into a three part series, which you can do on TikTok. You can go part one, part two, part three, which actually drives traffic from each part um, in anticipation. Some people break it up into 24 hour segments. And, um, but other people, they post it all at the same time, which is pretty much us. We wait 30 minutes and then we post. Just taking your best stuff and breaking it down from, from into 59 seconds is huge. Um, but keep it core to what you want and then just have fun with it. Like do little small things. Like sometimes we add messages in the last 0.2 seconds. So it's noticeable. What did you do? <laughs> and then people have to watch the TikTok all over again to see the message. And then they comment about it and just be really engaged with that audience. Okay. So yeah. somebody that's a YouTube creator that doesn't do dances to songs, they can still make it on, on TikTok. Yeah. They don't, they don't have to be a Charlie D'Amelio. Um, I'm sure you can dance, Dan, but I've never asked you. 
I think we've dance. made like one or two videos solely for TikTok, which is nothing like out of those. Um, and so what are our views and how successful has what's inside? Been? Like, wh- where are we at based off of just posting our old content, repurposing it and posting it on there? Yeah. So we've been on TikTok for 18 months, a little less than 18 months, 18 months come April 9th. And um, we've done over 300 million views. We have 1.8 million followers. And then uh, we're almost at 31 million likes, which likes is like a big currency there. It used to be bigger, I would say a year ago, and it, times have changed. Um, but the key metrics that you focus on are likes, shares, and then unique comments, like unique engagement. Um, and so shares can be broke down to like sending it over text or actually sharing it onto your own TikTok as a duet or um, as a stitch. So, all right. So TikTok, can you actually make money? How much money do you make off of TikTok? Like, is it worth your time to even go on there? Yes, you can get views, likes and stuff, but do you really make money on there? It's not our most profitable platform. Like, flat out it's not but from a culture perspective like it's really cool that we can post like cut downs whether they're old or from our new videos like blurred money whatever it is our audience really resonates on there this is blurred money is it real or is it fake whoa there's a whole generation that have kind of grown up on TikTok the last 18 months and it's become a part of culture. It focuses on music and it's cool to be a part of that from our brand perspective and continue to build those relationships off of platforms we're traditionally on. Like maybe Gary Vaynerchuk talks about, like it's not all about the money on a platform. Attention could someday translate to it. If you're not on the platform at all, you're obviously not going to make any money. We do have the creator fund where we make a little bit of money off of there, but it's really not a big money maker, but hopefully it'll turn into something. I hope that YouTube Shorts can figure something out because um, I think they have the platform, they have the history, the experience, they have the audience already from the YouTube side of it that loves video. They should be able to figure it out. It's just sometimes YouTube is a little too big and they have too many people, too many engineers, too many lawyers that are in the mix that maybe they don't move as quick and as nimble or have the vision of what it is. Like we we posted a lot of our old content on there. We went every day for like two months with the same content that killed it on TikTok and we got nothing on YouTube because the algorithm, it almost appears at least right now that YouTube wants imagines YouTube shorts to be like Charlie D'Amelio where it's like singers, dancers, these short clips, Matt Stefanina, which are awesome. They're great. It's great content, but why not let their other content content do well instead of throttling it because they don't deem it to be important. I don't know. We can go on. That's a whole other rant that we can go on another time. So anyway, so there's TikTok. That's one of one platform that we're on. Um, all right, let's go. We won't spend as much time on this one, but what do we think about Snapchat, Snapchat Spotlight. Um, for those of you that don't know, Snapchat has always been around, obviously, like they've been around for years and years and years. They've never done a good job at monetizing where people actually make money off of it. And in the past, you never see the views, you never see any of that stuff. And there's been people that have really gamed the system and faked it into getting big brand deals. We've worked with some of those people that are like some YouTube creators that were on Snapchat and they're like, look, I barely got any views, but I got paid $30,000 for this brand deal because the brand thinks I'm the number one on the person on the platform. And I've, so I've never really been a full believer in the Snapchat side of it. Well, until last year, November, Snapchat comes out with this thing called Snapchat Spotlight. And they had it for a while. Basically, it's like they want to do short content. They want to do videos kind of like what TikTok does, what YouTube Shorts is trying to get into. And so they kind of slipped out this announcement in like November. It was like November 20th or something, right before Thanksgiving. And it was fourth quarter. Everybody's working so hard. And basically, they just slipped this press release out that said, we are going to give $1 million a day out to the top 100 most viewed videos on Snapchat Spotlight. You would think that would get a lot of press, but the timing was terrible. And it just kind of was out there. And Snapchat Spotlight was a harder thing to find. Most people think of Snapchat, they're like sending their friends their snaps. So we were busy doing a bunch of other stuff. We didn't really do, look at it, do anything with it. Fast forward to January, David Dobrik comes out with this video of this kid that made $3 million in like two months off of Snapchat Spotlight, off of these like Mentos videos. 
And so Hunter is like, well, first of all, Hunter sends me the article. I, no, I think I, maybe I saw it. I'm not sure. I sent it to Hunter and I was like, Hunter, how did I get this article? And it wasn't about Hunter DeFreeze hacking the system. It was about this 19 year old kid. Cause that seems like something that we would have hacked and like been the front of, but we were super busy. So we went on there and within that week hurried and posted, like you posted a ton, like for a few days, it was like, it was like a two and a half day period where you posted like every five minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we tested it out and everything and it worked out really nicely. Um, but you don't see the money earnings for like two to three weeks. So for two to three weeks, we went hard for three days, posted about like I don't know, 30 to 50 times a day, like every five minutes, unless I was in a meeting and silent for like three weeks. Like what is going on? Like, well, it was we... weird too, because even while we were posting it, it was like some videos would have 50 views. Yeah. 50 views. Some of them, it would just not have any, it'd just be like uploading or whatever. It was like waiting to be checked mm-hmm. out. And then some videos would get like 300,000 or 400,000 views, like a couple of them a day. Yeah. And we're like, that that seems good based off of listening to that one kid on Clubhouse, listening to him on David's vlog or podcast. It was like, we thought that we we thought that we should make some money, but then we kept hearing nothing. We were reaching out to Snapchat. We know somebody there yeah. or, and he just went silent. And so I'm like, all right, this is dumb. Let's just stop. Yeah. And we stopped for like three weeks. And then all of a sudden we got a, a message from Snapchat and it was like, Hey, you have earnings in what's called the hyper wallet. Um, you go check it out to see how much you made. And we're like, what? Yeah. And I'm totally fine saying this. So the first day we made $25,000 in one day off of basically three videos. That was it. Three out of the 35 or whatever that he posted that day. So it was kind of like bittersweet because there was another day that we made some money. There's a few days we made some money on it, but by the time three or four weeks later, when we found out how much money we made, the word had got out even more about this. And so many creators were taking their stuff from TikTok and just bringing it over that it became harder to actually get your stuff viewed. And it was like, oh man, we had this opportunity. Yeah. I mean, we did, we did okay. We made some good money. I'm not going to complain about that. That's more money than we've ever made off of TikTok with way more followers and way more work on yeah. TikTok. And we did more than that just off of Snapchat in one day. And so kind of a weird thing. Yeah, and to give like context, like we had at that point 3,000 followers on Snapchat. And so like to have like 300,000 views, 400,000 views in less than 24 hours was pretty remarkable. And then to be to see that money come in, and I think we hit 12,000 followers like by that point when the money came in. And I'm like that's how much we made and like obviously TikTok was not even a tenth of that kind of crazy and what's also unique kind of backtrack before spotlight came out we were talking with our friend at snapchat mm, that's true months in advance we said hey we want to come to the platform we want to bring our content and focus on good wholesome educational content is is snapchat looking for that and they're like yes and so we had kind of talked with them for a while and we were in this limbo and then the announcement came out the week uh, the week or the week before black friday which for everyone listening, that's a busy time for just family and friends. But for from our side of things, we're, we were working on multiple campaigns. We were doing Amazon live streams yep. and different things. And so we just totally missed it until January. I'm also kind of bugged um, that we didn't get a message from our friend at Snapchat. Like, how does he not email? Then maybe he emailed you, but he didn't email me and say, hey, we got this new thing. Yeah. Like their main job. We've been talking to them for like six months and we had just like stopped like three weeks earlier or something, not like officially say we're done talking with you, but how does he not send that out to us and say, Hey, I know we've been talking about doing this production thing, but now we have this thing called spotlight. They're going to, there's a fund associated with it, a million dollars a day. Like if we would have got that email, I feel like we would have done something with it. Oh, 100%, 100%. <laughs> but like you live and learn at that point, you know, so it'll be I'm excited to see what happens from here because to give like further insight in, into the platform is Snapchat, it's kind of random. There's not like a, a key algorithm yet, but I can tell month by month it's changing. Like just like in the unique hashtags that we use, like the process of like approvals were so super quick at the beginning, like you said, like day one, super quick. Some didn't get approved, others did. But now it's like, 
it's a bit longer to get approved for your content. Like, yeah. And, and basically every piece of content that goes through there, they have to hand select it to be yep. in the algorithm. So man, I got to give credit a lot to YouTube over the years. A couple things. The YouTube algorithm was so good with YouTube videos and it's done a good job. There's definitely some gripes that everybody will have on certain aspects of it, but overall it's been pretty good about being fair. TikTok comes along and their algorithm is like genius. It's, you serve it out to 100 people based off of how many people engage with it. We're going to serve it out to another 100, and it just snowballs. So you could have no followers on there, but put really good content out, and it's going to recognize really good content, share it to more people, and just like not have a ceiling on it. Where sometimes now with YouTube, you get into a point where whatever your your window is, it's really hard to break through whatever your average is for the last like 10 or 15 videos. You you might, a good video, like a good video might do a little better, might do like 20% better than your average, but it's not like it's going to go, this video is so good. We are going to give this thing a hundred million views, which in the past it used to, like we've been the beneficiary of some of that, but now it's kind of, it like holds you in a range. If you're Mr. Beast, your bad video is going to do a certain level and your good video is going to do a certain level. And I know they like to say, it's like, well, it's off of notifications and how engaged your audience is. But there also is a component where the engineers are like actually holding stuff back. But I got to give cr big credit to Snapchat for like actually paying creators and putting this money out. It's still going. There's still the million dollars a day that they're giving to people. And some people are absolutely slaying it on there. So that's been really fun. Another one that we've been on lately is Amazon Live. And I, this has probably been the most con confusing for our followers because we'll just like post something on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitter saying that we're going live. And people are like, what are you talking about? You're going live on Amazon Live. So basically with Amazon Live, we highlight our products. If somebody's shopping on Amazon and they're looking to buy an electric bike and they click on the product, below it'll say live streams featuring this product right now. And then they can click on that and hear me talking about it. Most of the times they click on it and I'm not actually talking about that product at that moment because we have 40 things in there and it's just one of the items that we're talking about. But it's cool from a creator perspective for making money is that if that person clicks on your video, watches part of your video and then goes and adds that product to your cart, anytime in the next 90 days, if they purchase that product, you get an affiliate credit back on that. Now, the affiliate code, it's not super fantastic. It's usually around like two to 5% of that product. But if you have certain products like weightlifting products or makeup, beauty stuff, some of the affiliates on that is like 15%. It's pretty darn good. We've been experimenting with it. We're in like our fourth month of posting things. We have, I think 8,600 followers. We're probably the biggest on the platform, which is kind of funny. Um, they definitely have room to grow and like figure out their platform and how it actually fits in so they can get some more organic views and reach and what's it going to, what it's going to look like long term, But I like it. It's been fun. Um, we, that's why we didn't do Snapchat because we were going live on Instagram or going live on Amazon Live like every twice a week, three times a week. during Black Friday, Cyber Monday. It was like every single day I was on there losing my voice. After we film this podcast, I'm going to be going live on there. So um, it's been a fun platform, but that's one that we're on. Let's change gears a little bit here. Hunter, what is one of the um, weirdest experiences you've had with what's inside or strangest moments or funniest moments with working with the company or filming a video and being there, or like being behind the camera, whatever it is, what pops into your mind first? Um, there's a lot of stories. The first one that like was the most random day and it seems normal, but it was random. I got to the office and you're like, I need to destroy a car. And I'm like, what do you mean? I need to destroy a car. We're doing a video tomorrow with Bill and Melinda Gates where we're going to cut open this transformer and show what's inside. But I think it'd be cool to drop the transformer onto a car. Can you get me a car? I'm like, any car? Yeah, any car within the next 24 hours. So I found, I, I was like, I think it's a Ford Fiesta or something oh, like yeah. that. Like some old, so old. old car. It had blue racing stripes and i'm sure you'll see it in the if you're watching the video right now we'll pop up a segment blue racing stripes and this kid dropped it off at your house for like 500 bucks and then we filmed the video and then right after hey hunter can you figure out how to get rid of the car now and i found a guy that picked it up and like took it within like i think 24 hours as well so get a car smash a car get rid of a car all within 72 hours. I don't think I had a class on that in school, but it's like one of my fondest memories because I like those puzzles 
that that I have to do. Uh, another one is the the Hershey's video, finding a cacao pod. Man, you, that is, and just to let you guys know, cacao pods is like where they make the chocolate obviously but here in the u.s there's only certain locations basically in hawaii and then they had one place in florida which i came came to find where you could get a cacao pot but it's very hard to ship anywhere else because the problem with it is the cacao pod yes they have farms in hawaii but then they just had a botanical garden where the lady had a few so it wasn't even like a place where you buy them and ship them yeah but the problem is we were working with hershey's it was the first time they'd ever done a brand deal with an influencer ever. It mm -hmm. really was kind of cool. Lego, we were the first. Hershey's, we were the first. Challenged us to so find something that is unique to chocolate. It's pretty big company. It's kind of cool that we were the first ones to do their brand deals and they were successful enough that now they've done brand deals with so many YouTubers every year. It's a huge part of their marketing strategy. So I'm glad to be a pioneer and like to help companies out and to help other YouTubers out. But with the Hershey's one, it was interesting because uh, there was a bunch of stuff I wanted to do. They have these um, big lights that look like Hershey Kisses at Hershey Chocolate World in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I'm like, let's get one of those lights and destroy one of those. And then their lawyers were like, no, we don't want to do that. And I was like, let's get a vending machine, fill it full of candy, and we smash it and take the candy mm -hmm. out and highlight the candy. Great idea. No, our lawyers don't want you to do that. So that was like, I was like, oh, man, our best idea is. So then we're like, I mean, a cacao pod, the thing that you make the chocolate with. That's not the most interesting. It is natural history or it's like a natural product, which sometimes those do well on our channel. It's, so they're like, okay, yeah, we can do that. That one sounds safe. It's not any logos on it. It's not dangerous, whatever. And so we asked the, them, that's the only ask we had of them, get us this cacao pod. They're like, perfect. We will get it. We'll see you here. We booked the flights. We're ready to go. Two and a half weeks later, three days before we go to Hershey, Pennsylvania, we get a message. We have to get on a call with Hershey's and they're like, yeah, bad news. So it turns out all of our cacao pods are purchased from Costa Rica and um, the Dominican Republic. There's a few different countries where that's where they get all of them on these farms. And because of the import regulations, the way that they send them over, they have to send them in and it has to go directly to the manufacturing facility. And they can't like resell them or take them out of the supply chain because then there's like some sort of customs rules, FDA rules. I, I get that side of it kind of, but they're like, sorry, but we can't get a cacao pod. And so we're going to have to cancel the video and just not do it. And, and I'm like, you're Hershey's, you have to be able to have a cacao <laughs> pod, like, or cocoa, cocoa guys, cocoa beans, cacao. When we say cacao, it's like cocoa. Um, I don't like, you gotta be able to find this. This is ridiculous. And they're like, no, we, we, we can't get around it. I'm like, seriously, they have a whole factory full that you can't just get one of them out and have it's a, it was really weird. And I guess there was a hurricane that had just gone through um, like Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico and it, it damaged a lot of their farms. So it was like even harder to get things shipped because of the big hurricane. So I get that side of it. But to just give up, that's not the way we work as influencers. And that's maybe if you're doing a big budget production, then maybe you have to stop. But for us, we're just like, no, 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 we're going to keep going. So I'm like, Hunter, find one. So he sat on the phone for like six hours and just called all these plants in Hawaii. Couldn't really get it. Like I was willing to pay for him to fly to Maui, pick up one of them and fly back and meet us in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Like we were sourcing it everywhere. And then finally, yes, he found this botanical garden in Florida, this nice lady there. She's like, do you want a green one? Or do you want that's like fresh? Or do you want one that's like brown and hard that's been out for like a week or two? And I'm like, both. And so anyway, so she shipped it to Hershey, Pennsylvania, overnighted it and didn't charge us for it. Mm -hmm. And it, she just overnighted it there and said, if you, I mean, if you want to make a donation to our foundation or a botanical garden, that'd be great, but I'm more than happy to give this to you. It was fantastic. And so I think we gave, we donated like $500 for this because it saved the day and she was pumped with the 500, but we called Hershey's. We're like, all right, it's still on. We're still going to come. Uh, we have one. It'll be there tomorrow. And they're just like, oh my gosh. And the marketing person was like, Hey, um, that works. You saved the day. And in a way they're kind of embarrassed too. Like, I can't believe you found one in less than 12 hours. <laughs> when we're like Hershey's and we couldn't get one. Like it was kind of crazy. And so we flew out there. We did the video. Did you go to that video or is it just me and Lincoln? It was just you and Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. So it was funny because we went in there. I come in with my vlog camera 
and it's just me and Lincoln. And they've got like all these photographers from their corporate side of things that were taking videos and pictures to show that side of it. And I remember hearing the marketing manager person talk because a Google representative flew out because this was a big deal. It was their first time. And Google, of course, is hoping this will not be the last time and they'll get more brand deals through them and more revenue for them. And so, um, so I hear the person from Hershey go over to this, go over to the Google person and say, is that their entire team? Do they have anyone else? Like, is that it? And she's like, yeah, that's it. And I could see the disappointment on her face. And for me, I was like, okay, game on. We've got to kill it here. We got to make like the best video ever. So we did the cacao pod. We featured their VR thing. It was an okay video. It wasn't fantastic. I knew even releasing it. I'm like, I don't know how good this is going to do. At least we have some interesting things from Hershey chocolate world. But then the thing that I was like, we should do a Hershey Chocolate World video, just a video on that. And I think that's going to crush it. Not sponsored. So we did that video. That video still is like killing it. Okay, so it's going to go into there. Good chocolate. And it's going to get covered in a beautiful chocolate river. The thumbnail was great. Giant world's largest Hershey bar or Kit Kat or something. But we did a great job and they ended up using, like being able to do a lot of stuff with influencers. But yeah, I love those moments. And that's one of the things that has been fun as a small group. It's like finding the solutions, finding answers to problems, because we want to do dumb things like destroy a car or get a cacao pod and get this thing and we'll fly out to get it if we have to. So I don't know. It's fun. It's not your normal job, but it's fun. I think that's what makes it fun. It's just yeah. like the most random stuff. And that's also the fun of YouTube. Like if you're somebody that wants to be a YouTube creator, like just go make videos. If you're somebody that wants to work with somebody like Hershey's, go and make videos about Hershey's chocolate, like incorporate it into your video in a way you can make like an online resume of this is a product that in a way like you want to work at this company and then you can work with them like Lego. You want to go to Lego world and make a cool video. You want to work at Disney, make some cool Disney videos before you reach out to them and say, Hey, we are these YouTubers. We want to do brand deals with you. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times the companies are going to find you or they're going to be like, that's a really great video. We want to work with you. And at the same time, if you're really negative about a brand, then they're going to see that too. And they're not going to want to work with you. So, yeah. And yeah. well, and I think there's tons of opportunities like Nerf just announced they need a chief TikTok officer. And so over the mm. next like four or five days, it's all, all out competition on TikTok. Show us your best Nerf videos and then you'll be paid $10,000 a month oh, for the next great. couple months just to make TikToks for Nerf. And so mm. it's like competitions like that. But then like last, there's quite a few examples, but last year um, someone made an edit for Disney and now they work on Disney TikToks and Disney campaigns and stuff. Like it's crazy how you can get connected with people so easily through the internet, like not only on TikTok, on Twitter, like it's amazing. What do you feel about college? Do kids <laughs> need to go to college? Is it important? I, you know, you know, I'm bittersweet about it because I think the connections that you can make at certain u universities and colleges are really valid. Do I think people should be learning information that's eight years old about communications or different things? Not really. Like you're going to learn so much more on the job than you ever will in college. And that's what I loved about LDS business college is instead of exams and tests, I actually worked with companies and I was graded yeah. on my projects and that's what drove me to there because when we first started talking, I was like, yeah, I've worked with these companies. This is what I did. Like, this is why I'm passionate in these things. And I talked about Facebook a lot and that's what drew you to wanting to bring me on is because I had experience in that instead of saying, theoretically, Facebook is doing this, this, and this, I had actually done a few different things. Like I spent 13 cents and this was when ads were amazing on Facebook, obviously due to policy and uh, user information. It's, it's not as a uh, keyed in and that's a good thing for privacy policy, but I spent 13 cents and I got an ad, um, delivered in front of CEOs, only CEOs, not the CMO, not the CTO, only the CEO would see my ad and they would send me a message and be like, how did you do this? This is mastery because all the ad said was, hi, my name's Hunter DeFries. This isn't a joke. And I'd insert their name. I would love to work with you because I think your social media could uh, be improved in X, Y, and Z. Call me at this number. 
and that's I was great and I would get calls and I spent 13 cents and I got job offers. Yeah. I think that's creative. I love the guy for Gary Vaynerchuk that got a job by making a rap. Did you ever see yeah, that? Yeah, I did see that. Like he, he was trending it. on YouTube. Yeah. It yeah. was so good. It was such a good rap and he totally got a job with Gary Vaynerchuk. So, um, personally, and I'm older, I'm like 40 years old. I do think school is important. I think it's good to be on that path, but you also need to mix in some things like what Hunter said, some real world applications, real world things where you're building your resume and experiences, because whether you're going to be chief TikTok officer of, of Nerf, or you're going to do stuff for Disney and make good money off of it, um, you, you can't just have like, I went to school and these are my classes I took. You have to be able to have a real world resume where a lot of times people don't give a rip about that, di that diploma. It does help you in a lot of different aspects. Like I, the main thing I learned from going to college was being able to communicate with people, public speaking, and then also work with people in groups and just get stuff done. Or if you have a deadline, be able to just be smart about working together and getting it done. Did I learn a lot about like actual school stuff? Probably not. I got a business finance degree, business management marketing degree. So like it was good stuff, but really you learn, you can learn all this stuff on the fly in the real world. It's just really that certificate to get me in front of people. So I definitely recommend be on that path, go to school, but also look for opportunities and build your real world experience. I really think like for Lincoln, that's a common question these days now that he's almost 16. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to college? What do you want to do when you grow up? Like what job do you want to have? He doesn't have the answers right now. He doesn't know what he wants to do, but I see him potentially doing something to where he does go to college, but he continues to build his online social media profile and has a big enough resume that he can get in and get some of these unique jobs or create his own thing where he just continues his own business of being a YouTuber or doing something on social media. Is he going to be on the PGA tour and golf? Probably not. <laughs> um, I don't even know if he's going to go to college and be able to play. That'd be great if he got a scholarship and went. But could he make YouTube videos and Instagram videos about golf and receive brand deals from different companies and be seen as a big influencer in golf? Yeah, I think that's very likely. That's definitely, a, and, and with where he's at right now, a lot easier to obtain than going on PGA Tour. And um, But it's a hard thing for a lot of people to get, but he already has his foot in the door. But I still don't think you just jump right into that. You go to college and you learn some things and, and grow up because even as you're young, like you, you, you mature a lot. I'm looking at some of these YouTubers that have made mistakes lately and are apologizing for stuff and getting canceled because when they're 19, they did something stupid that's on the internet. Like you never know what is, what is going to be, what you're going to be like in the future. And like, and so, yes, I think school is good but there's my two cents on that. No. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And that's why I went the hybrid model, right? Like I worked and I did school at the same time. Like I think it's, it, it is important more for the connection side. I think just making good connections in college, because a lot of my classmates now are like working at like ancestry and different organizations, not only in Utah, but at like at Facebook in San Francisco, like I have a friend in DC and I have another friend, one of my best friends, he's helping run the social for New Zealand, like government and different things. So hopefully when, uh, this is all over, we could potentially go to New Zealand and do something there. I'd love like, to go there. Yeah. Like you never know where your classmates are going to go, but you, they will always remember and you will always remember spending time on those projects and like having a good time and making it the best you can. And, um, your professors as well, like they'll, they'll be able to see the difference between someone that's just going to school just for school and other people that are going to school to actually get into their career field, make a splash and like enjoy what you do. And I think that's the number one advice you could ever give is like, do what you love and try and make a career out of it. And that's, that's what you're telling Lincoln. He's trying to figure it out, but he loves golf right now. And so that's why he, he's so passionate about making golf videos. And that's, that's the best way. Um, I love, cause I check our DMS, you know, you check the DMS as well, but I check the DMS on Instagram quite often. And a lot of kids are just reaching out to Lincoln and saying, Hey, can we go golfing? I love your golf content. When's the no next golf video coming out yeah. and make content around what you do and the audience will follow. Like, yeah, this year will be a big year for Lincoln. I think for golf, he's been kind of in hustle and grind mode to get better, but I'm definitely going to film some videos. A lot of people ask like, where's the golf videos? It's, it's kind of like a bipolar situation where it's like, people are like, 
I love your golf videos. When's the next one? Even after we publish one, they're like, when's the next one? I'm like, we just published this one. But then we also have people that are like, go make a separate golf channel. I don't give a rip about golf. So also know that on YouTube, like you're going to have the negative comments. Like people, people are going to say things negative, but if you're passionate about something, it's okay. Just go with it. So I'm excited. His team won the state championship this last year in high school and they're playing in the national championships. They invited 40 or 50 of the best high school golf teams in the whole nation to Pinehurst, North Carolina for a three-day tournament. And so Lincoln will be there. I'm going to go to it. I'll probably film some of that. And then I'll film some of his high school golf. And I don't know. I'm just excited. There's going to be some good videos. Some people are going to be like, I came here for Tesla videos. I came here for home videos. I don't care about golf. And they're and I'll be like, okay, good. That's fine. See ya. I'm here to make the videos that we're passionate about. And it's fun that fits in with our life. So, which takes me to another question. It turns out we're some of the top influencers in the world um, when it comes to Tesla's, um, turns out I'm one of the top in the world. I'm going to pull it up the stats on, um, there's this website where you can track it. Marquez Brownlee is number five with 490. We are number seven with 439 referrals. But the question is Hunter, why don't you drive a Tesla? That's a great question. Do we not get paid enough at what's inside to buy a model three? I, I do. And no, this is not leading into we're giving you a free Tesla. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, is, is there a secret <laughs> door? Not, this is not happening. Yeah. Um, no, like I, I'm definitely going to get a Tesla. Uh, like we did the road trip and it was like I had driven it for maybe like an hour max ahead of that. But that road trip, like, I, like last night we drove from Arizona to here. Mm -hmm. The whole road trip I was telling my wife, Tate, I'm like, Man, it'd be a nice to have a Tesla and such just a better road trip. Put for on sure. that autopilot. Oh yeah, and just enjoy the drive and just have like security. I think that's I think that is the best peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Is you're not only driving, but the car is like helping drive with you, and it can see things that you can't even see in the distance. Mm -hmm. But back to your question, when am I going to get a Tesla? I hope soon, but. I'm definitely going to get one. Yeah, you need to do it. Do it for Tate. Do it for your dog. You could have dog mode. That's you could go true. Go to the grocery store, put your dog in there, put it in dog mode, and the air is good. That's true. And you're set. That's true. Instead of your gas I'm, car. But here's another part, and I think you're waiting for it too. I want the new battery tech. Yeah. Like I feel like, I feel like it's going to be better. I I'm excited. I want. I don't think I'm going to get a, get a Cybertruck. But I also want to see it first and yeah. be like, that's cool. I think the Cybertruck's going to blow a lot of people's minds. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I did see the electric Hummer. I need to show you the video. It's probably out. It's out by now. But the Hummer SUV is really cool. Like, it's a good mixture. I think I say it in the video. Like, it's a good mixture between the Rivian regular looking pickup truck and then the Cybertruck, which is super futuristic. This is kind of in the middle of that. It actually has door handles that you can like open for the Cybertruck. It's not going to have door handles. Like it's so mm. futuristic. And so I don't know. I'm kind of, I, I like, I wouldn't mind driving the Cybertruck. It is kind of like a look at me. I'm weird um, in a way because you got this weird futuristic truck. I don't mind that. Like people looking at it and being like, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But I do like the idea of like the Hummer where it looks like a normal car, whereas a lot of people won't even know it's an electric car. It just looks cool. So I don't know. I'm torn on that. Yeah. Well, and there's so many more options coming out with in the EV space. Yeah. Like, have you seen the Volkswagen like retro van that they're coming out with? Like that looks cool. That's pretty cool. There's like, there's a few other car companies that are keeping it very modern, but then like canoe is one that I'm it's, it's a startup out of Los Angeles and it, um, it's it, it kind of has that VW van vibe, but they're going to have options where you can make it into like a camper and like different things like that's that. Cool. And I'm like, that's cool too. We so, need some solar on the roof. Like I would want some solar panels just to generate something while you're camping. Oh yeah, just to keep the lights on, charge the iP like mm -hmm. and put the Starlink uh, yeah, Starlink satellite on there. Like that whole system, I feel, and I and like people my age like i have two different people i went to high school with they totally just bought vans and have traveled the last year and so it's a thing it, i love that it's back it used to be yeah. like you see a creepy looking van and it's like there's a kidnapper in there but now it's like oh there's some hip 
couple in there or some person like when we were in mm-hmm. we were in Carlsbad, California doing the Taylor Made Kingdom and we were stayed at this Hilton right on the beach and it was so cool to see just like the most random collection of crappy SUVs and like vans and campers and everything it's just like terrible condition but everybody just loves it they're just on the beach they're going surfing every day i'm like that's a fun lifestyle yeah and hopefully it continues after covid like covid made people travel more but I, by car but I, I feel like it should have some staying power i think it's going to stay because i think with remote work in like starlink and 5g and everything people people can work wherever they want so good which is amazing to just be able to if you need to be home, be home. If you want to hit the road for like a week or two and then come back and still get work done, phenomenal. But like going back to what you said, imagine having solar panels on top. Imagine being able to not only like have your car there, but say there's another van and you can charge them and give them like a boost yep. and like build this whole community. Like the EV space is exciting now, but I'm excited to see it in the next five to 10 years. Like, everyone's coming out with something right it will be a different world in five to ten years a lot of them aren't going to make it a lot of the cars the technology is too outdated people just as much as ambitious as some of the big companies are about going all in on electric if they don't get the battery tech up to where it needs to be and if they don't get the software and the ui up to where it needs to be it they are going to fail they're not going to sell enough of them and they're gonna have this huge investment in it and i don't think they're gonna be around anymore so 10 years from now it'll be interesting to go back and look and see like who survived tesla is gonna make it (laughs) they are so far ahead of everyone with all of those areas and elon musk is so far ahead but he may end up saving a lot of companies by just because he opens up his patents um, lg is a big partner when we were with gm lg is G, LG has been their partner for battery technology for years. Well, LG also works with Tesla for their batteries and Panasonic. But so maybe people won't fail as much as I'm saying now, but um, they could. There could be some companies that don't stick around. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm still surprised that Toyota hasn't come out with anything in the EV space. Like, I feel like I was a huge Toyota fan before I started knowing about like the revolution of electric cars, like Toyota's tried and like, uh, just this true blue good car. I'm more of a Honda guy. Yeah, and, and Honda's great too. Toyotas are pretty good. Honda's but. great too, and I, I'm trying to think. Well, has Honda come out it's with just any hybrids? Electric? Both Toyota just, uh, yeah. and Honda have had it, good hybrids. I've been buying Honda Civic hybrids since like 2011. I've owned five of them hybrids. Yeah, it's so like I've been on the hybrid tra- hybrid train for a long time before I got my first Nissan Leaf and then the first Tesla. So uh, hybrids are a great option, but. Why can't there be cars that are like hybrids that have the full self-driving that Tesla has and the safety features? Like that's the perfect scenario for me. I love electric cars. They're great and all, but there definitely is a place for gas cars. Like the speed of being able to just fill it up with gas and then go Mm -hmm. on your trip. Like you made the road trip last night. You would have had an extra 45 minutes if you had a Tesla. It would have been a longer trip. If not more, like depending on yeah how how it went because there was quite a bit of traffic and that slows you down but yeah like when you brought it up i think you tweeted about it and i was like it kind of made me think like imagine had electric cars come first and then gas cars got introduced and it's like you can fill up in less than five minutes oh, blow people's and mind. get a sm- like a drink and something else from the store while it's happening all in five minutes. You can fill up your gas. You can get 600 miles of range. So you'd say it in range. 600 miles in range in less of time than it would take you to go inside and go to the bathroom. Like so that's what it is with a gas car. Like mm-hmm. that would blow people's minds. It definitely would from the EV side of it. Because the EV, it's like you plug in, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff. You can go eat a full five course meal in the same time that you're charging. But with electric cars, you pull up and you're like, yeah, can you plug it in so tomorrow morning it's full? Absolutely, sir. They go down, plug your car in, you watch it on your app, and they charge it for free. Yeah. Like, that's kind of a weird thing, too. Like, I wonder when that's going to go away or when the hotels are going to get smart enough and start, like, charging you for it. Or they just are like, yeah, who cares about this? Yeah, I, I, I think I think it's going to stay for at least five, five more years. And I think certain hotel chains just won't care. Like, I feel like they did it because... The people that had electric cars 
were buying a car that's a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they had money, mm-hmm. and it's like we want those kind of people staying at our hotel. They're going to spend money in the casinos, or they're going to they're going to spend money. They're going to tip well. They're going to bring other types of people to the area, and they're not going to go to the other other hotels in the area because we have charging. Like I feel like that's what it started as, and it's a nice, convenient thing. But it's because EVs are becoming so popular. There's going to become a point where. They're just gonna be like, why are we doing this? Why are we giving mm-hmm. free gas mm-hmm. to our customers? <laughs> but it, but on almost on the other side of that, like when we were doing our uh, cross country trip and stuff, like we always checked where's the supercharger yeah. and where are these things, and like to put a supercharger next to your hotel or at your hotel huge plus for tesla owners because they'll probably stay the night and like yeah that is that that's it is a plus like even a destination charger the slower one if mm-hmm. there's a hotel that has that and a hotel that doesn't and it's an extra ten dollars more for that other hotel the holiday Inn express that has it versus the hilton where i always stay at hilton's i'll pay the extra 10 bucks to go there i did one time get an embassy suites for leslie and lincoln up in salt lake and kind of basically the same parking lot across the way was a holiday Inn express and I, I booked the hotel for Leslie at the, the at that place. And I said, here's what you do. You're going to pull up. You're going to park at the Holiday Inn Express, plug your, plug your car in, and then just walk all the way over to your hotel and just leave your car there for the night. So we did that once. I kind of felt a little bad, but I also felt a little sneaky. But there's no sign on there that says for hotel guests only. But that was kind of funny. It's like, funny. let's go get free energy from that Holiday Inn Express, but let's actually stay at the Embassy Suites. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. But... Yeah, we'll see what happens in the next five to ten years in in this whole space because it'd be cool. I just think there's companies doing not the smartest things like the Volts wagon. Did that was you, funny. Did if you it would have come out on new, uh, April Fool's, that would have been good though. Yeah, they it, oh, awesome it, it would have been great on April. It's actually a good name. I know. I love the name. I just don't know why they released it and then said it's, it's a joke. It came out like two days early on. Yeah, accident, like I think. that was funny. Yeah. So if it was meant to be april fools it would have been good but. yeah all right what are you looking forward to for the upcoming year the rest of 2021 what's something that you're like this is something i'm looking forward to for what's inside for youtube videos or whatever that's a great question i, I there's there's a lot of things i just feel like my whole mentality this year has been continuing to build our presence on more platforms Mm -hmm. and so like i'm really excited about continuing our growth on facebook like year over year we've increased right around 50 percent growth in both views and monetization and followership and that's been phenomenal um but like diversifying to all these different platforms like i mentioned earlier on in the podcast with medium like i want to see it you mentioned it earlier it's fun to fail and then learn from it and then succeed. And so right now, like turning our videos into articles is like we're, we made, I think 13 cents from a couple articles, 10 views. Yeah. We're 10 reads. Yeah. So like a penny of you, which is great, but now we're trying to figure out distribution and like proper practices and, and like, how can we take this content to other platforms? And then like, with TikTok, how do we can continue to grow? So I'm just bullish about like starting other platforms, continuing to grow on other platforms. Like I love that you do your thing and I kind of like see what's going on and then talking to brands about it and being like, Hey, we're doing great on YouTube. We're doing great on Facebook, but here's a really unique opportunity actually with say Twitter or Snapchat. Like yeah. this is what's going on. I like being able to be a part of the analytics and then be a part of the, the conversations with brands, be very transparent with them and say like, this is really unique and we would love to work with you on it. So, yeah, I'm excited for us to be done with COVID and like, I don't think we'll ever be done. I think every year it's going to be, the flu is now going to be the new COVID in a way, not saying that COVID is the flu, but you know what I mean? Like every year it's like, all right, the vaccine for this year's flu is also going to hit COVID and stuff, you know, like there's going to be well, some sort of mutations of it every year. But I'm hoping that we get to a place where people can travel freely, international, domestic, and be able to just actually make some good content with other creators, travel vlogs, just stuff that's like, as much as I love filming videos and we have a beautiful studio here, 
it's so nice when we can like go to big, large events like CES or go to a YouTube conference VidCon. or go meet with, yeah, go to VidCon, go with, go with a brand on a trip where we drive cars through Southern France with like 15 other reporters. Like there's so many cool opportunities that we get to do with companies that just kind of have gone away. And that's fingers crossed that 2021 at the end of it, we can look back and say, you know, we had five or six good months or even four months of being able to have more of a normal routine of making videos because videos will come. They'll come more when we have that type of stuff. So that's what I'm looking forward to. The, the killing of COVID <laughs> getting the world back to normal as much as possible. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about that to go on like those unique opportunities and today i get my vaccine so that's that's oh, fun today nice today's the day so i get my first dose so Oof, it'll fun. be it'll it'll be good but yeah kudos to everyone that worked in this last year in the healthcare system because it was it was hard every everyone had a hard year but i'm excited for just to be outside talk to our neighbors grill some hot dogs like normal stuff like that yeah. so hopefully it'll be back I still don't have my vaccine scheduled. I talked to Leslie about it last night. I'm like, do you want to get the vaccine? She's like, I don't know. Do you want to? I'm like, I don't know. So that's kind of where we're at. Like, we definitely want to get it at some point, but I just haven't gotten it yet. And I, it, it clearly, there's been enough people that have been, that it's been administered to, that it's proven to be safe and effective. It's like 90% effective. They've shown the Pfizer and Moderna in the people that have had the dosage, doses. So I don't know. We'll get it at some point, but I'm mm -hmm. not in a big hurry. Part of me is like, maybe come August or September, there's going to be a different mutation and they'll be like, Hey, here's the, here's the vaccine, but it also covers these ones now too. And I'll be like, okay, cool. I'll get that one. But it's probably going to be a thing where it's like every year you have to get like a booster shot of something to cover the new side of it. So, yeah. And yeah, I'd love to get the Pfizer one because I used to work at Pfizer. That's what, that's what I'm getting today. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap on the podcast. We covered some social media stuff. We covered just random stuff that we cover. So um, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. We will be, we'll probably have some regular guests. I would imagine Hunter will be on on a few other ones. So if you are on the YouTube side of things, leave a comment down below of what questions you'd want answered anything that you think is interesting that you want us to talk about on future episodes. And we'll take a look at that before we film the next podcast. But um, yeah, if you're wherever you're following this, like go ahead and follow, download, subscribe. I'm still new to the podcast world, so I don't leave even a review. Know. Leave a review, five stars. Give yeah, five stars. <laughs> I don't even know how this whole thing works, but I just know that it's fun to be able to chat and just have a discussion and put it out there to you guys and connect in a different way and hopefully give you something to brighten your day as you're driving your car, working out, sitting in your office, whatever it might be. However you listen to podcasts. Um, yeah, that's kind of the plan here. So anyway, thanks for listening. Hunter, thanks for being on. looks like we hit almost an hour with this podcast. So fantastic. That was fun. Perfect. All right. Good luck with that vaccine. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I know. That's <laughs> the last thing I <laughs>